Awesome. Okay, we are live. Hello, how are you? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello how are again. you doing? Uh, fine, thanks. And thanks for having me here. It's a huge honor for me. Absolutely. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you here. We were just speaking uh, just kind of like before and I asked you, how should I call you? And you were like, oh, okay, this is, uh, you know, a story in itself. So maybe we can start from there. Um, yeah. And I can ask you again, how should I call you? <laughs> uh, yeah. And you can explain the, the story behind uh, behind the name. Yeah, it's, thanks for asking because for me it's really way with, when people call me Craig or, or AL. In, my name is not AL, it's Adrian, it's a Spanish name. But uh, neither my, my parents call me Adrian, everybody calls me Cano, it's like a, a surname. And this was nice because when I started in, in Tumblr uh, my, my, to think about my name, uh, I think that would be nice uh, connected with these all crazy uh, times or social networks and privacy and, <coughs> and these kind of issues. I was really aware of them since my 14, 15 years because uh, I saw them having born. So I think it would, I thought it would be nice to, to place my real name as my artistic name. So it's, it's a way of hiding me more in, let's say, in the internet, because when people look for my real name, at least my Isaiah Crego, they only find my work, they don't find my life. So it, it's a paradox that using my real name is my, my way of hiding my name at the same time. So Adrian is my name, or Kanu is how everybody calls me. Okay. and. I guess my next kind of question is, you know, you mentioned like hiding and like animosity and privacy. Why is that important to you? Sure. It, I think it's more because I, I live the, the porn of the social networks and I was aware of how my, my, my inner friends and people and family was changing and reacting and, and how the, the concept of privacy changed by one new that is I call extremacy is the opposite of intimacy. So extimacy is a concept I, I, I work a lot because with with social networks, um, let's say that it, it, a new kind of art is uh, born that where is more important the image of the artist uh, rather than their work. And, and for me, uh, since I'm a child, for me it's more important the artwork than the, than the person itself. So uh, I decided to do that uh, on one hand, so people uh, will try I, I, in what I have in mind. People will focus more in my work instead of me. And on the other hand, because I, I'm, it's, it's good to be invisible today. I, mean, uh, I can't work in the street because when my work went viral with the street art uh, back in 2014, it was a crazy month because people recognized me and everybody asking a lot of uh, things. And I want, I am a photographer and a poet, so I need to, to, to be alone and I need to work alone in the streets. And, and if I post uh, things about me or my life, this is not my art. I am an artist, I am not a model. So I, I think it's good because at the same time, I can play with more entities because I have more, let's say, more beings that I am using, but they are not connected to me for, for music or for another kind of art because I, don't, I want to separate them. I don't understand my music or my poetry or my photography in the same pack, but at the same time, all of them are, are feeding each other. So, so for me, the, 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 the concept of privacy nowadays, people uh, should difference between anonymity and, and, pri um, and privacy. I am, I am not anonymous. Uh, people can contact me and people. But another point is the who am I in the real life? And, and I want to, to, be, uh, to be relaxed and not have to, to be depending on that. So I, I feel more free like this. And, and the impersonalization of the work, of course. Because when you see, I don't know, you see a good um, artwork from the 20th, uh, from, from the 15th century, you don't think about the physical of the painter. You just see the paint. But nowadays, if you if you think about, um, I don't know, a, a Basquiat work or, or a, a, I, I don't know, this more recent, uh, you think instantly on the person. And maybe you forget about the artworks. You, you understand? So I, yeah, I think absolutely. It's story and, and it's hard. Even, and this is the reason I never had social networks too. And this was a, a way to know if my work will transcend without me pushing it. I just use Tumblr, I put my, my words there and never promote nothing. But my work was flying to, I, to IG, to Facebook, to another post. So it was a, a way for me to know if my work was transcending or not. Because on the other hand, I know a lot of people because I was working with them. That is people that is 
buying followers or buying likes to so they they the accounts grow and 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 add some um, and brands approach them because of these numbers it's okay i think I, i'm not against that it's just that i don't i don't participate in this kind of of new game it's, uh, and i have a real pulse of 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 the of my work i think that's so interesting you know i was just thinking about this this morning and i had a, a comment i was having a, a like a coffee with a friend and i had a comment and i just told her you know if you think about the if you think about art history and a lot of the artists in the earlier kind like ancient let's say earlier times yeah. like i do not remember a single face or the yeah. person of any i literally and it's so, so i think i i saw a post or something on twitter which kind yeah. of like sparked my uh, my thought on this and um, we don't care. And it's, we, don't care. We, don't, we don't even with pass of time we don't even care if the artwork yeah, exactly. is okay unless you as yourself as for example dali Dali was in part himself a, a piece of his own. I mean, this case is okay, and the same happens with with Bansky. Even he's anonymous. His personality that is not uh, real is 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 a piece itself. Uh, 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 even so, uh, Bansky create a personality that is Mr. Brainwash. is a real artist, but it was born from from fiction, you know. So uh, Bansky is playing with this too because he's not showing his face. But he's inventing faces and artists that are fiction. But nowadays they are real. So uh, I think this is interesting. But not just uh, remember the face of Basquiat or, or some or like nowadays that the 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 face or, or your life is more important than your work. And when you die, this <laughs> doesn't import anymore. Your work is what, what will remain. I think. Yeah, absolutely. I guess um, you know, I think like in a way uh, the the space. I I don't, I don't think anymore now. But I, like, uh, in I mean, you've been like uh, you know in the blockchain, like in the NFT uh, space for quite a quite a while. Do you think it was more um, anonymous or like privacy and animosity was something that uh, people would do more in the past, and now it's kind of like gone more into the mainstream? You know, social media like follower likes, etc. Yeah, I think like you know, like in, in everything, it's about liars. I mean, in in everything that goes uh, mainstream, there is the, the the main liar that that everyone sees. Uh, but if you dig on them, it's like in music. I don't know. In music, you the first uh, when you focus in a in a new kind of music, let's say trap. Last this year, last year happened. Uh, in the surface, they, they are the the mainstream. But the mainstream are never the best in non kind of of arts are the mainstream, no more. And why are the mainstream? Because people love what people love, it's no more. But if you dig on this, you will find a lot of branches and a lot of, in, about the blockchain, I, I, of course, we all see the mainstream, but if you dig a bit, you will see a lot of people doing a lot of things about uh, privacy, anonymity, and even people uh, uh, preparing new kind of, 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 of platforms to be more uh, independent. Or, so I think uh, blockchain is giving us the, as I always say that blockchain is are like the bones or like the body of the internet because internet was the nervous and, and digital art was the soul feeding internet but blockchain is giving us a bones or a let's say a exoskeleton that uh, is allowing us to move finally because all these past years were we, we didn't have a body it was all our our work spread it in the internet but nowadays blockchain can work for this for for being famous or whatever in the surface, but allows you a lot of tools to, to keep working underneath, but preparing uh, new platforms or new kinds of, of understanding and creating art. This, a lot of ideas I had this year, this past years, I couldn't do because I don't have this plat this structure. Nowadays, I can do a lot of them, so I don't think I don't have to think about them because I have already prepared, and and this is give, giving me a lot of creative uh, freedom. And of course, a uh, personal freedom, of, because until two, two or three years ago, I was depending on on commission works and branding works and that I never liked. And now this is finally I can only focus on my own work. And and this uh, this working is always nutritive because I am always drinking uh, a lot of ideas, so more ideas born. And nowadays it's not only ah will be nice if this exists. It's now now I is let's do this because uh, blockchain is allowing a lot of people that may imagine a lot of people that never work in this nowadays they are getting relevant for their work and this is thanks yeah. for for blockchain 
and because they can prove their work is theirs and blah, 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 because my work was really uh, stolen a lot and I never had the, the chance to, to uh, demonstrate that these works were mine. Uh, think about that. I am. I work a lot of GIF, with gifts, and when I have uh, many uh, some problems, legal problems with some big people, I have to uh, not finally go to trial, but I have to speak with lawyers and, and this because they were using my words to promote their products. Um, I had a problem that uh, for legal in, in legal terms, video and photo are, are okay. You can deny, but with gifts, as gifts were always thought as something minimal from the internet, just for memes and for funny things. In legal terms, uh, fighting for a GIF it was really hard because I only had the, the file of a GIF. But nowadays, I have a document that is the, the NFT that I can show to prove that it's a real work. So th this was my, my struggle all these years, fighting, trying to make people understand that GIF is another format as is picture and video. And it's the most new and, and is the only created for and by the web. And at the same time, is the, is the format less, uh, most underrated, I think, despite it's the only format uh, in its natural habitat, I think. This is really interesting. And actually, I want to like deep dive a little bit into, uh, you know, what you've been doing for the last kind of 10 years. Um, and also, what does it mean to be a street art gift pioneer? What is like how tell us a little bit about like, you know, your practice so far and in the past um, and and how do you actually like work within the street, like doing gifts, etc. Sure. I think that there were two, two key points here. And uh, one is that uh, I always understood Internet as a, as a street because in, back in the times when my space and photolog and all these blogs, I, I never use them, but I, I watch them. Uh, the fact that I never use uh, um, social networks is not because I don't like it's because I study them. So uh, it was like the streets. In some streets, you will find more uh, fancy things. In another street, that then Wikipedia is like a, a big square where everybody can go and, and talk. So at the same time, I, was, I, 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 I grew up in a really small town, so I never had museums, I never had cinemas, I never had nothing. So we have to think about a lot, how to do a lot with nothing. And, and I was really attracted by street art because uh, it's out of museums. And I, I never like a lot the, the kind of, of people that only appreciate uh, art inside museums. And then uh, when, I dive in, when I dove into street art, I start uh, meeting these kind of people that were more in, from, from fine arts, but they want to, to express in the street and make uh, people uh, make uh, art free as now is working the blockchain in the streets of the internet is the same. So this was a point. And the other point was, my, I, I can't remember perfectly because I had a lot of pictures of street art because I started doing photos since my, I don't know, my 15, 16 years old, always with the camera. Uh, I tried two years today to do um, uh, two years of a sculpture of a stone, but it was really slow. So I, I changed for photography again. And one day uh, looking my street art pictures, I realized about one thing and it was by the, the days where, where the street art was really hyped with Vansky and blah, blah, blah. Uh, um, and I realized that street art is only street art for, for them, not for us. For us, it is internet art. Because in my case, I never saw Vansky in real, in real life in my life. But I know all his work. I know all his work, like everybody in the world. So I, I think, OK, so the, the internet is the street and the street art is on the web. And I can't animate something in the street, but I can in the internet. So at the same time, I was uh, oh, since uh, I don't twenty ten about. I was digging in gif in gifs, not in gif art, just gifs. Um, it, it was a coincidence that, that this year I uh, I focus in in cinemagraph technique uh, inside gif that allow allow gifs um, to be more uh, bigger, but in in a smaller size is is just a technique. So I mix these two these two worlds, the, the give the technique with the street art photos and place on the in, on the street of the internet. So I started to to place on Tumblr, but I just I, I remember only two, my first one and then one more complex, and they go to viral totally and Google wrote me and a lot of blah blah. blah. So I, and the, at this point I understood that uh, that the street art uh, is not only for the street. And this was really paradox, paradox because I was working a lot with the street artists all these years. I was in residence for months, and and in, I am I work a lot with uh, Mutante Creativo, that are curators here in Galicia, and, and the and the street artists too. So uh, it was a paradox because at the same time they were calling me to work with them, 
I was trying to explain them that their work must be on the web too. Yeah, no, no, the, in the web is not true. We have to work only on the street. Okay, no problem. But nowadays we are seeing that a lot of street artists are approaching the digital because they are understanding that in the street is okay, but you have to be all in, also in the streets of the web. So this this was the midpoint. I I think understood, and of course by then in, in 2014, my first idea was to do in augmented reality, but it didn't it didn't exist this kind of technology. So I have to wait. And in this month, in these years, in the, in these next years, I was I keep a, I I think I've animated more than 200 walls by now. Only the published ones. I have more, and I was working a lot in the streets with these people. And finally, I, I decided to to try to mix with them with the blockchain. But the the the, the codes, the the prism, the point of view is the same as 10 years ago. But now I can do it. It's the only difference. And you mentioned before that GIF and GIF art is still kind of you know not considered, or maybe not has the same consideration as like being a new. Uh, genre yeah. and form of art that is basically born with the internet essentially yeah. uh, so now like I, I can maybe like compare it to you know we're seeing a big attention a big boom like this big kind of realization on like generative art right like everybody's excited yeah. about generative art yeah. um, like how can you uh, can you compare that to like gif art and why do you think it's not uh, being in a way I don't want to say valued, but like attention is given to this form of art too. Yeah, I, I think I know why. Because I, all these years I, I work with GIF, but I think a lot of it and study and speak with a lot of people and with more GIF artists. And there is uh, two big reasons. And the, the, big, the bigger one is that uh, we, we've been 40,000 years thinking in, in picture mode, in static, from the caves. Uh, and at the same time, in video mode, in A, B points, like a history, like uh, in films, in, even in theaters, they, 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 uh, the, the theaters they didn't do GIF format. It's an A, B point. And, and GIF format, uh, born in the 87, so it's really, really, really new comparing uh, with other kinds of art. Because despite painting, photography or whatever, is still. And then theater, uh, movies, films, video is A, B. So this, these two kinds of art are already done. So they have a, an aura of, of gloriousness of oh, the painters, the sculpture. OK, uh, and GIF happens oh, the opposite because GIF is really new. It's only 34 years old. And the curious say, the thing I always say that uh, GIF art was created the, the next day I was born, exactly. My mother discovered it uh, when, I was, when I, I, I was 30. In the newspaper, oh, GIF art, uh, GIF um, is now 30, and it was exactly the day before. So I, I try to say that it's only 30 years old in front of 40,000 years and of painting, like, for example. And as, uh, add to this that uh, GIF was born in the 87 for, for um, art purpose. The first GIF ever done is a, an ad for a plane, I think a, um, a plane company. And, and it was always used for memes, for funny things, for not not in an artistic way and and it has a reason because when in the 80s 90s the, the computers were too slow and for for loading a gif you have to wait hours in this case of big gifs and another point is the screens uh, until 10 years ago 15 years ago we don't have screens in our hands in this jump uh, uh, now we can see gifs so it, it was the jump and it's it connects also with the big jump we live from the 20 from the 90s 20 and, and 2010 all the jump about technology and, and social networks and how life in the world changed I realized that in this jump that first nobody was doing pictures only the photographers with with the smartphones suddenly everybody becomes a photographer okay but suddenly with better uh, phones everybody become becomes a, a, a filmmaker. And in this point that I was thinking, I, I thought, I, I don't even understand light and time to be a good photographer, but everybody is, is doing here film. And I thought, we are missing something here. And I focus on GIF. I said, oh, why are not uh, pay, uh, paying attention to this format that propose a new can, kind of creating, of doing, and, and perceiving life too? Because in life, when we, for example, in politics, we say, let's say the final picture of the, of the elections. Oh, and you see a picture. Or let's let's see the history of uh, from ta the, this year to this year. You see films, but if you think in some things uh, in GIF mode, 
like uh, I always say that uh, we are humans and we learn we learn by repetition. So uh, these kind of things, when you learn, I don't know, a, a drum pattern or when you are trying to learn something, you repeat itself. And I think, okay, we can mix that, this kind of, of thinking and, and use GIF for this for this purpose. And this is the reason I, I, I could use video, but for me, video is not for loops. I, uh, unless you are doing it for, for video jockey sessions, because I, 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 I am VJ too, and I use videos in this case, but for the internet, uh, video will never loop because it's a video, it's an AD point. So I prefer to use a GIF, despite it's uh, less considered, let's say, art that in front of a 4K video. For me, it's not. For, I always say the, the comparison between a video is a cologne, a colonia, and, and, and GIF is the perfume. It's more, it's like the bonsai tree. And, but I don't know, it's, it's, I think it's much better than five years ago. If uh, nowadays people is accepting GIFs as art finally, and this is good. And people is not is not loving uh, anymore because when I say people ask me, well, what do you do? I do gifts. When I re reply that for people is ah you do cats and you do memes, okay. And like this, <laughs> ten years like this, and nowadays ah okay. And the people that I told this uh, three or four years ago nowadays they writing me like okay you do gifts but you do art okay. So this is the yeah. the point that when people hear uh, listen gift the word they instantly connect with memes and funny things and da da da. But nowadays, this is changing, and, and I like it. Do you think that this connection uh, that people make is also due to, for example, like, as soon as you say GIF, in my mind, the first thing that comes up is Giphy. Yeah. Uh, and, GIF. ah. you know, like this platform that kind of like basically allows you to, uh, you know, take any GIF and just use yeah. it. So do you think that that's also been um the reason why it's kind of associated immediately to first of all something funny but also something yeah. free in a way yeah Thank, thanks for this question because uh, giphy contacted me before they opened so i was there from the beginning since the beginning i asked them uh, to get pie for our work I, one day i wrote uh, an email to them like hey do you plan to pay your workers so us because they, they, we have billions of views there uh, each day so yeah I agree because when Giphy born, allow a lot, uh, let's say, allow the, all the population to have an, a direct access to gifts. But uh, Giphy at first was born from art. Uh, they told us, that in fact, they have a section of art, blah, blah, blah. but suddenly they realized that the, 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 let's say, the big amount of gifts are more about uh, funny and, 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 and it's good because it's, it's, a, it's a, a really emotional format because you, you communicate more with a gift than with an emoticon. And this is the reason, and what I said now is the reason uh, why Facebook bought Giphy two years ago for four billions of dollars, or no, forty thousand billions, a lot of money. And I remember we wrote them uh, one year, uh, I don't know, maybe maybe six months before about uh, blockchain. I wrote them, oh, do you plan to use blockchain because I wanted to protect my work. I I, I did it not for money. I, I wrote him, them Giphy uh, just to to look a way to use blockchain to protect our work and all these billions of views connected to out to us so we can have a, a pulse of our work but they said they, they said no and six months later i read the new this new ah giphy bought a uh, facebook bought giphy for, for a lot of money and i wrote them this exact day like uh, and now <laughs> now you are thinking about paying us i ah, know we can't we can't but i think they finally will enter the blockchain i think i don't know uh, and this is the reason I, I think I find sometimes quite weird uh, these are uh, people using our work in Giphy and it happens to me many, many times. But then when you ask, uh, ask them for credit, hey, OK, you can use it. But credit, uh, because when you share, when you, in, for example, in Twitter, you share a GIF with Giphy, uh, the credit doesn't appear. It's just a GIF. And I wrote to Giphy about that. Uh, you can credit because people happen to me, I think, with uh, but famous people that uh, share your work and you say, hey, thanks for sharing. For me, it's, a honor. it's an honor, of course. Don't remove, just put that is mine. Ah, okay, and they delete it, delete it. It's always like this. Now, really few people, so sometimes it's for this reason, because ah, it's a gift, I delete it. But if it was a painting or if it was a 4K video, they will credit you, I think. But yeah. uh, I, uh, this last year, is uh, the fact is being, is being cleaned, let's say, and blockchain is helping it a lot. Because now people can, it's sad that we have to value in dollars some a gift art to be valued for people, but it's something necessary too. Yeah, I'm also, you know, thinking like, 
something that I think is uh, is is interesting is related to this, like the I don't know if it's the right word, the com com commodization, like the fact that like art becomes so easy to access, to consume, yeah. to look at, yeah. um, that you don't. It it all automatically uh, loses value at the eye of the person who's kind of looking at it or like experiencing it. Uh, and similarly, like you were saying before, everybody who now has an iPhone, let's say, or a Samsung or whatever phone with like a you know a 4K camera, um, is can kind of self-proclaim themselves like a photographer or. Um, yeah. so like, it's a really fine line between the two, right? Like, yeah, but you can, you can read this line because this is the reason I usually post about that, that I, I never define me as an artist. I do things. Then people is who decide if you are an artist or not, because I have a lot of friends that they say, no, I am artist. I am artist. Yeah. But who, who more is saying that? Because I can say, and I, I wrote a tweet about that, that is the same as, as saying that you are a good guy. You can say it, but if nobody says Maybe you are not a good guy. So I, I hate the word artist uh, because first we nobody knows what art is. So you can you you can't be what you don't know what it is. So uh, so uh, in this point, people auto proclaim and is good in one hand because it motivates you to believe uh, an artist and photographer or what I say. And this is is good because uh, make you connect with more people and you learn a lot. And but it's bad in the way that you can't only believe your own voices. Because if you uh, years ago I wanted to be a, a cinema director and do tr trilogies and do documentaries in all the world, and suddenly I I, I succeed with six frames that are gifts. If I if I believe my own voice of being a, a director, I will fail, of course. And sometimes so I put this in Tumblr. I was a it was a, a way to read myself. What you post on the internet is a way to read uh, uh, what what are you in the say. And at the same time this. The, the easy way, as you said, the, the easy way of having internet, consuming and creating, I think is this is um, about attention. Uh, I mean, uh, nowadays, uh, uh, almost digital is free. So the value is in the attention. If something grabs your attention, this has value because it's grabbing your attention. And, and this is the reason, another reason I started to uh, do GIFs. Because back in 10 years ago, it was not very common to see a lot of GIFs in the webs. So if you enter in a web that everything is, is, is still and you see a GIF, your eyes will go there. Mm -hmm. So uh, so I will, I was trying to do that. So nowadays, it's the same. You see a lot. We, we all see, I don't know, thousands of works a day in Twitter, new. But how many do you remember, remember at the end of the day? Uh, in my case, one or two. The rest is like a copy and another one. And it's the same, blah, blah, blah. So it, it's, it's hard. Uh, and because everybody can do it, but it's good too because uh, we we can have nowadays uh, a way to measure our work instead only only institutions and three rich guys. Nowadays, uh, people is who is talking, and if you if you post something on the web, and and the I don't know, and the the politics of your town don't want to exhibit you, but you have seventy million on the internet, uh, it's like this. It's no no more. It's the taste, and nowadays it's still. We are still measuring art in terms of uh, traditional art. So for me, it's sometimes crazy when I see themes being value for, I don't know, for 1,000 likes and another people has billions, literal billions. And, and this is a point I'm feeling since I entered Twitter that uh, crypto art is really focused only on Twitter and people is only looking in Twitter. And this is a mistake because uh, Twitter is a really big part of the internet. And if you if we were looking out, Twitter or all in, in even in Tumblr, even in Giphy, we will see that a lot of people were, were doing this since much uh, ago and, and proposing even bigger ideas. And so for me, when I enter a crypto art was like uh, in some way I have to stop and go back in the past. And the street art work are, are the are the are the example. A lot of people is telling me, oh, it's innovative, it's new, it's something original. But they are they were done almost 10 years ago. And the reason is, uh, I always told, and people don't like, but the reason is because people understood understood internet first and as Facebook, then they put their heads in Instagram, and now they are moving them into Twitter, and they are uh, omitting all the huge internet. So this is the reason that in this past uh, five years, 
for people, internet was IG. I mean, if you weren't in the internet, in the IG, you didn't see, I suffered it because I, a lot of people told me, you should be on, in, on Instagram. You will have a lot of followers and blah, blah, blah. And people was doing what I invented years ago and people applauding them. But I prefer not to stay because if I go inside, I, um, I got uh, impregnated, let's say, with uh, what I call amniotic culture, things that I don't want to know, but I know like the Gangan style and these kind of things. I, I'm not interested in that, but it's everywhere. So my inconscious will be eating it. So I prefer always stay away of that. And nowadays it's happening the same, but with Twitter. Everybody who was in Instagram is jumping into Twitter, but they are again forgotten all the internet. Because if we were looking outside the Twitter, uh, we, will, we will see that many, many things were already done years ago, but out of blockchain. Why? Because blockchain didn't exist no more, but it's not new at all. It's really interesting. And I think like some of the conversations uh, like uh, that I've had as well, for example, with like Jason Bailey and, and like to, even, you know, if you think about uh, sometimes I think within the space, we forget that like art existed before sure, NFTs. I mean, sure. And, this is a, and, a, yeah. a big point. I, I, I'm calling this a, a, in the invisible wall. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Because I know I, I speak with a lot of people by the end of this kind of people that we grew in, in Tumblr and we know each other all. And nowadays it's like uh, all these people that were building, building this kind of digital art, I, I feel it and all these people is feeling the same as me, that it's like we are being overlooked. And, and it's crazy because uh, we are seeing things that we did years ago, nowadays called new. And, and, and it's okay that this happened, but it's not okay because if we study a, a bit history of art, it's always happening the same, that we recognize people when they are died because people uh, started to understand 10 years later. But nowadays we are alive. Uh, no, we are not die. So we, we have boys nowadays. And this is the reason I, I, I truly thank you the opportunity to, to speak here. And, and, and the, uh, the reason I joined Twitter to have my voice, because I think it's, it's, a lot, it's very important to, to have voice in this case. Uh, not in the way of attacking, because I, I'm not attacking the new people. I'm just saying that another ones are being forgotten that we're building this. As I always say, that uh, crypto art is a natural step of digital art. It's nothing new. So uh, when I speak with some people in Twitter, they told me about digital art, blah, blah, and I show my work from 10 years ago, and they say, wow, this is the same as today. Yes, because this is not new. And it's a pity that for a lot of people, digital art has born with, with crypto art, and it's not at all. Digital, uh, digital art was born in the 60s. But in the, 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 the shit for me, and this is the reason I, I always say the same, that uh, I was doing digital art always, but the shit was creating not digital art and then upload to internet, but uh, created online internet, uh, online art, let's say. I will call this online art more than digital art because it's art created from, for the internet and by the internet, it's, everything stays inside. It's not creating a piece of uh, video art for a wall and then record it and place it on the internet. So this is the, the reason I also I am working with digital public space in crypto boxes and this kind of, of places that I am placing stuff in augmented reality, not discovered yet, but uh, I am doing the same. Uh, so, so yes, I, I would like the people dig more uh, in out of Twitter because they will find a lot of people that uh, are really, really big. And they will say, wow, well, this guy is, 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 is dope. Not me. I, I mean, uh, thousands of people out, and I talk with them all, all day. I recite, recite a, a DM from something from Tumblr, and oh, how are you? Uh, are you doing that? And they are suffering this because, uh, man, this guy is is doing that. I did it ten years ago. And, okay, and I think uh, this will will change soon because many people is asking the same questions, and and people is digging, of course. And what do you think? And exactly like my question is like. What do you think is needed to make that shift and to make that change um, from, you know, artists, but also other kind of like members of the community? I think it's an uh, important key here is uh, are the collectors too, because uh, I, I mean, collectors go, will buy what, what they like, but most times they don't have uh, good information to dig, to, to understand where we came, because a lot of artists like me uh, appear in Twitter because we understood that was the, the let's say, the square of the internet where, where people was talking about crypto art. But most of us, 
uh, were uh, grew up in another places and, and most in, out of IG, of course, because we got, we all already had this decentralized mind since years ago, not now because people is talking about decentralizing. I always thought about internet decentralized. And, not, and so when a collector find a new uh, artist he likes, if he don't have a lot of things in Twitter, they don't dig a lot. Uh, and I, 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 I'm feeling it because when some collector approached me and wrote me, ah, I bought you this in Super Rare, blah, 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 I send more links for my old work and they say, wow, this is really old now. So I, the, what is needed is what are you doing right now, you? Is invite people who, who were uh, before, during, and will be later to, to know the, their, their prism. And I know that a lot of people will tell you the same. Uh, I will send you some names later because uh, you will you will know who, who they are, of course. And I think this is good because when people listen to this, and, and as is happening to me in my DMs and emails, people uh, start to understand better what is the value of, of each work. Okay, this has historical value. The, I understand the value of, of the first mint artworks. I understand perfectly. But this doesn't imply directly an artistic uh, step because uh, minting a GPG is okay. It's, the merit is minting it. But nowadays that everybody is allowed to mint, wh what is the merit of this? And on the other hand, there is a lot of merit, artistic merits. And uh, let's say I always place the example of Scorpion Dagger. Uh, it's a guy who, who is, is doing animation since a lot of years ago. And he did a lot of years ago a book with augmented reality and uh, a marvelous. So nowadays, um, it's like we have to go to this past to demonstrate that we already did. And it's quite annoying because I don't like to do that. I will prefer that people already do. But if I don't know, if I don't do it, that, did this and, and these people the same, nobody's doing. And sometimes we feel like it's unfair because we, don't, we haven't worked it all these years. We were waiting for this. And now they say, okay, we will that, but now we are outside of the building or what is happening here. So this kind of interviews and, 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 and people, there is a guy who was in Tumblr all, a lot of years and nowadays he's in Twitter. I, can, I, I don't know if I can say his name, but I will. And he, ha, he was doing, uh, I think each month he, he wrote um, a, a post in Tumblr about an artist, a GIF artist. So he has a lot of them and he was studying them. I talked with him a lot of times. He interviewed uh, six months ago through in Twitter. And these kind of people, I, I value them a lot because it doesn't matter that our work is outside if then there is not a, a dialogue, a dialogue a conversation about um, the uses of, of it. Um, for example, in street art, is not only animated walls. It's, uh, it's about doing it in augmented reality so people can enjoy them in the street. And in some cases, when the, when the wall is erased, I rescue them because I use the facade of the building uh, empty as trigger to place the, the wall again there. And nowadays the same, but in the metaverse, like in super world, I can place my, so if we don't speak about that, I think it's normal that people won't think about it. But if we speak is when they, they have a trigger in their mind and they say, okay, and the best that uh, this can inspire more people to do the same, to, to see that it's not only move a picture two frames, that you can interact with a whole world, with the blockchain metaverse. And I don't know, it's, it's, it's really soon, let's say. We are really soon in this. And when you talk about um, digital public space and like working with augmented reality, I want to know a little bit more about that. Uh, what do you do exactly uh, and how? I mean, in the in the virtual one or in, in both? Yeah, in both, uh, let's say in, in, in real, real life, in physical life, I, I like <laughs> to I, I, I use the, the verb augment reality instead. One thing is augment, use augmented reality in one of your pieces. You can do a painting and augmenting it. But for me, the interesting point is augmented reality. Let's say uh, there is a thing that I call recent archetypes. There is symbols in all the world that are the same, like a, a stop sign, like a Nike a logo, like, a, like a, I don't know, a MacBook Pro. They are the same. So you can use these recent archetypes to augment it. So your work won't be only in a painting. You can augment all the world. Like, a, I don't know, um, uh, an ad. Imagine that uh, Christian Dior make a, a, an ad really famous of a picture. You can augment it. You can put your place over it. Uh, I have some examples, but I don't want to tell them because I, I want to, to know how long can they stay until people discover them. But uh, they are in the in the both in the metaverse and in real life too. 
and and in in the metaverse i think i find i find it uh, interesting because it's the same i can go in the metaverse i can take a picture in the metaverse i am a photographer but i don't care if it's in real world or in a metaverse i take a picture and, and then i can use this picture for a trigger to place my work over yours like the graffiti style you know when somebody uh, bomb uh, his logo in the street and then another guy over it so it's not like a a war like a war is interacting with the public space because at the at the very end every public space is not real really public it's always inside uh, some hand so i like to play with this and, and nowadays you have the real 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 life the metaverse and then you can even play in twitter or in the vatican web let's say because there are public spaces and you can play with them and augmented reality is the link here because you can manipulate a web unless you are a hacker, but you can place uh, art over it with augmented reality. So uh, there is a lot of uh, this could be a, a whole a whole chat, I think. Also, I can see some of the collection on uh, like digital public space on uh, Maker's Place uh, as well, which is really yeah, uh, one, really cool. One, one of them, the Malakai Wall. Uh, doesn't exist. Doesn't exist in four years ago, I think. But it's available if you go to the place. It's in a, in a school. You use augmented reality and you see the wall again. The, it's the one with the mushroom. Uh. So uh, this is the, the the thing I I find interesting. I imagine for a festival that has eighty walls, um, some festivals uh, raise and paint over it, so you can do layers. Me, this was in the twenty ten. This was in the twenty two. And you can add sound, for example, with a little speech of the artist, for example, and you can link it. In this case, you can link it to the maker's place. If you go in, in the augmented reality, the options will send you to the NFT. So you can use a lot of links. Yeah. And this, I think I wrote, is 2015, and they erased it, I think, in 2016 yeah. or 17. So I went in the, into the place. I take a picture of the facade, is erased it, and I think it's red nowadays. And use as a trigger for the for the old for the old wall. And I think this wow, is a that's incredible. a good key because uh, I am talking with a lot of them nowadays uh, for the drops and so on. And they are now having more ideas of, of this kind. Okay, wow. Okay, I was painting in the street, but now I can. They are think they are starting to think about digital too. And this is the reason I think is the bridge because street artists work mostly strictly analogical, and they never yeah. go because they don't find a purpose when you explain them the purpose or an utility they say okay this is how it works and for example Sabek has some animations too in frame by frame paintings and walls uh, Senor X is not in maker's place but he's always doing digital artworks and I think it's, a, it's the same as happened to me when I work with them a lot of ideas and techniques I, I stole from them now they are understanding uh, how to mix these worlds I never was there in Russia and but this wall exists so for me it's, it's the same and of course it is how you choose the picture and how you do it in this case the he did the picture from the crane wow this is incredible uh i really like this too this piece yeah uh, the day are dope I, I always say that the uh, the, the 51 this is percent. london yeah 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 uh, this yeah is, yeah it's london yeah. he lives he lives there yeah in, in Senor X, I always say that the the merit of this piece is fifty one percent of mo or more are from them. I just animate their their idea and I try always not to remove or add nothing they don't they don't place. I want to respect them as the same. Uh, I know most of them personally, so I try always to respect to their personality or their approach to the street. And so I I love that a lot. I I learn a lot from them. I in these cases I stop my mind. I just listen to them. And I try to adapt to their idea because sometimes I could do another things, but in, I try only keep in the frame. For example, if, I, if you go, if you go back, the um, Elisa Cap de Villa one is is the most subtle one. Uh, this one in the top right, uh, the animation is very subtle. It's only in the in the plant and in the yeah, hands right, yeah. and the, the painting in the back has a little motion. And I did it like this because. The, the paint was, uh, I was there this month uh, when she was painting it. I was taking the pictures all the week. So I, I meet her and she is really calm and really, 
really lovely and really so i try to adapt to their style with my it, it's easy to put there um, a flashing light and i don't know a, a beer dancing but i prefer to to do it subtly in this case in the senior x you see that he's more crazy because he's more crazy and a really active guy and blah, blah, blah. so for me it's really important to uh, meet them this is awesome. We have actually a question from the audience um, too. So Nitika is asking, could you ask about his inspiration behind the artwork Inner Search that's in Genesis collection? Yeah. I loved it. Yeah, the Inner Search is the, is the guy swimming. And uh, the inspiration, I always say that I write a lot of little quotes. And most of my, let's say, my, my abstract gifts are not uh, born from nothing. It's just a conversation between the screen and the eye and this is good looks good nice here but the, these other more poetic words like inner search um, is the is the translation of a quote like this all what I was telling you about the social networks and not being present on, on them the the quote was inner search is not in the web history this is the quote because sometimes we are value for what people see us in the internet but our inner search is not on the on the internet nobody can can know what we lived. So uh, the way to translate it is a, a guy swimming in a black eternal sea yeah, and the lines you see are, are like data. I am swimming because I, I, I never was on social networks, but I studied them a lot. So uh, it was like uh, swimming in this kind of data between the, how do you say when you swim in the other direction of the river? Uh, I, uh, against the current. Okay, so like in eternal swimming uh, against the the data that I was perceiving in a black in a black uh, sea, but in eternal swimming because uh, I never stop. I I I know I don't stop to cry. Oh, this is uh, this is not working. I I keep working. I, I keep working. And nowadays uh, this piece was donated by Manta NFT to to the museum, and I feel really good because it was really symbolic that this was the first one. I did it, I think, in 2017, as a, as this, as a, as a kind of summary of my experience of swimming alone with no social networks, blah, blah, blah. And finally, in the museum, it's like, okay, this, it's, it's really symbolic. And the inspiration is like this. It's just the way to translate uh, some quotes I have, because words are image. So if I, and, and gifts, uh, and quotes are gifts, because some, some little quote, you can translate it into a gift. And when I don't, I don't, when I don't know what to do, I just take my notebooks and look for a, a little quote. Oh, this is this is good. I translate it. And, but now, thanks for asking this about inner search is really symbolic. Well, yeah, I was actually also looking at um, a piece that you have on Makerspace, which is GIF dot text. Ah, yeah. um, and I wanted to like just kind of like maybe. Uh, take a, uh, it's loading now, but take a little bit of time to you know, chat about like also, um, so for example, like you mentioned before that you're a poet, uh, you're a photographer, you know, you're a musician. Like I, I think like, uh, you know, specifically, like I, I also speak to a lot of like creators who would, wouldn't define themselves as like, you know, digital artists, but are maybe like writers. And I'd love to explore with you, like how um, you take this, you know, creative practice and like kind of, you know, the input yeah. and the output, like how does that happen? Yeah, I, I in my case, the, the words and let's not confuse poetry with poem because poem is a question of format. You can write a poem with with no poetry at all. And for me, poetry is, is what you don't see of what you see. OK, like uh, the perfect example is an ad. An ad is the perfect poetry. You, you see something, but they are trying to tell you another thing. So in your case, uh, with, uh, with using words, I, I, I learn to see. When you are with somebody in the street and you see something poetry, the other guy is not seeing it, but you say, hey, look that, it looks like blah, blah, blah. They say, oh, what the, uh, this is photography too. It's the, 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 the capacity of being the poetry inside the, the, the world, no? So in this case, uh, for, the, for, the, uh, for the book, this, this was born more like a, a way of avoiding censorship here in Spain because some years ago uh, there was a book about the, the the narcos here in Galicia that is called um, uh, oh shit, I can't remember the name now. Well, I will tell you. Well, it was censored. They want to censor the book, and I, I was thinking, okay, 
a book is a book because it's a PDF or it's a, a GPG with pictures, but what if I do a GIF uh, in which a frame is a page of a book and I put on the internet, people will see only this, a, a, a GIF moving, go, 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 go. But um, people don't know or know, but it's not really common that you can print a GIF. If you open a GIF in your computer and click print, they will print your printer each frame uh, in, uh, in each page. So you can have no a book. Yeah, and this case, in this case, uh, the idea was in 2015, but I, I never did it because I don't have blockchain. And it will be more like a, a PDF or a GIF in the internet. So I propose Maker Place to do that because this is a book, but it's not a book because it's a piece of GIF art, but it's a GIF art because you can print it. So it's fungible and it's not fungible too. And at the same, uh, the cover is is in augmented reality and leads you to the piece of the of the birds. And if you print it, uh, the frames you see in the middle of the of the birds is an animation, an analogic, an analogical animation. And if you see it in Twitter, you can stop it because each of these pages are um, a, a, a short story. It's not a book. Each page is an, a different story, it, and they don't have order. They are random. And I, I wrote them, them, I think, two years ago or something like that. So you can stop it in Twitter and each frame is a different story. It's only in Spanish. I prefer to do it in Spanish because I, I use a lot of play words and, and the translation can, can be crazy. But for example, case set A is a, is a guy from Twitter offered me to translate it. So I think I, I will do it in the future. But this is a gift, but it's a book, but it's a fungible and non-fungible piece. It's printable, it's an animation. And it's more things that I won't say because they are hidden there inside. I, I use a lot of cryptic uh, stuff. But uh, thanks for asking for this piece because I think it's yeah, it's amazing. Not everybody. And I didn't the... actually, I didn't know that. Uh, I mean, now that you explained, like there's so much more than 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 this. But it's it's something that I um, it's it's really interesting to like see. I think you mentioned before like experimentation, right? And I think like the the blockchain and just the environment in general like provides. Uh, for this and allows for this like you don't really have to you know work on any uh yeah. anyone else's ways and rules so no. um it's not like if to me you know what I, what i what i enjoy like seeing and talking about is like these uh you know there's not it's not new ways of doing art it's just experiments uh yeah, which can be like, like part conceptual part uh you know literature part whatever it's like a, a new, a, 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 like a new table to work on uh, the, the, yeah, yeah. we have an, a, a table with the classic tools but blockchain is not only a, it's a tool itself it's not just the place where you put your artwork it's, it's how you understand it so th this point is something i am i'm feeling with new people arriving that they they get over how you say uh, blind with the concept of nft and money and 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 then they forgot about the environment and this is the same that if you go in the jungle with uh, with not knowing what kind of animals are poisonous or not. You are, this is the jungle, the, the river is, is beauty, but you go there without not thinking about that, you will have pain. But I think this is a problem that is, have, is, is being nowadays because people is not studying the blockchain, but they are focusing too much in the NFT. And the NFT is just a flower of the jungle. But it is, it's good because when they discover it's okay, okay, I have to now understand all the environment, and sometimes the, this is the point that people, because I, I talk with a lot of artists and street artists, and the point that they don't like uh, usually is this, is having to learn another language. But I told them, the evolution don't wait, you have to. Or, or you understand this, or don't uh, don't worry, keep on your own, and don't, you don't have, it's not essential to be on the blockchain and, and crypto art to keep, to keep being artist. Because this is one thing I don't like too much, that it seems that, if you are not in the blockchain, you are not an artist anymore. And this is, this is false. Because it's the same as, as we only consider music from the MP3. All, all the people behind, is, is, this is the same. So this I don't like too much because we are uh, overlooking a lot of incredible artists, literally. That, oh, this is the, the point. And they were doing the, they were building the language of digital art. Crypto art is the, the bones, is the consequence. It's not, not the... Uh, people, you said that before, for people, uh, digital art was born in crypto art and it's exactly the opposite. I like the analogy that you make with uh, blockchain being like the, the bones and the structure. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
Uh, this, uh, is, this is a kind of quote I wrote, but to understand myself, and then maybe this turns into a gif in the future. I don't know. Uh, so I, I take note too. Thanks. We have uh, one other question, and then maybe we can um, we can see if there's any anything else or wrap it up. So, hello, mm -hmm. would love to hear more about rescuing ancestral artifacts in virtual devices series on Super Rare. Yeah, perfect because. Uh, the this uh, was born from a concept I, I was thinking about uh, digital archaeology, and uh, because one day I was thinking about gifs and animations and what will be the the first animation or or gif mode thinking in human, and I found that in Egypt about four thousand years before Christ, the, uh, uh, there is a tomb with a, a sequence. Uh, I have documented. I have in actually an animation about it. Uh, I never publish it because I want I want to do a quick making of uh, of how I research it because I found the place. I found a book in in archive.org, archive.org, this this web where is a lot of mm -hmm. all the stuff. I found a a book about uh, wrestling fighting, and inside of this book there was the animation, well, the animation, the, well, a picture made in the 60s of this tomb, and I rescued them and blah blah blah. So by this time, I, I was interested in digital archaeology, let's say, and I was doing a lot of crate, digital crate digging, like looking in old webs and, and looking for raw material to rescue them. So uh, in this process, uh, I was I was in, uh, I was finding a lot of artifacts, like but but just the sketches, painting or, or, or old photos that artifacts from the Mayas or from the Egyptians or from the Chinese people. So uh, I found a, a good way to create a series using these old um, artifacts that uh, in the past were used for something ritual. And I always relate GIF with ritual because GIF is like the visual mantra. It's like uh, when you go to the Tibetans and they are singing the, the, the mantras, you know, they go, uh, that are sounds that make you get connected, let's say. GIF for me has the same power of visual mantra. When you connect with a GIF, you, lo you lose the sense of, of time so i try to connect this kind of old artifacts i don't i can't remember them but some were a serious another from egypt and but well, there are 11 i have only published four and and the way was uh, using these pictures to translate into into a new format like if and using a really minimal style that i'm using this since past year i know more than one year i'm using this kind of of minimal works because uh, when this kind of minimal linear work uh, makes you, you can follow each pixel by your own and you can get a, a, a really good mantra following the lines. I, th I think is what happened in my brain when, when I do. And then I think this will happen to more people. This was the first. I, I think. These I mean, are uh, in, in, in absolutely uh, incredible. I was also, you know, well, whilst I was uh, like, I'm aware of your uh, work since a long time, uh, especially from like Hick at Nunc. Um, yeah. But I was also wondering the 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 decision or uh, the use of like black and white um, and not having colors. Is it like why do you why do you do that? Yeah, thanks for asking, and I know why perfectly. I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, I, I I use color too course, but uh, since some time ago, I, I realized that I am more interested in the thing than in the color. I'm interested in a car, for example. I don't care if it's yellow or red. I'm interested in the thing. And then, uh, more philosoph philosophically, or how you can, how you want to say, is more that uh, colors are ornaments, uh, just this. And if I can create the same and provoke the same with adding colors, for me, it's, best, it's better because uh, it's easy to do something dramatic using red, for example, because we know the codes of the brain, that green is more peaceful, blue is more colorful, and red is more blah, blah, blah. So uh, this is for the, let's say, the psychological reason, but there is a reason, a technical reason too, is that GIF has a limit of colors. You, it has two, five, six colors max. You can use more. So the more col colors you use, the bigger will be the GIF. So I was trying like a bonsai to do something consistent, but small. So I, I was uh, starting to, to uh, cut colors because uh, now these ones are strictly black and white. They, there are no grays. The grays are generated by the density of the of the whites. So uh, I was doing black and white photo and video on GIF, but uh, since last year I am cutting even more the the, the palette of, of black. So nowadays it's black and white. But 
another thing is that the black and white uh, artworks uh, resist better time because they don't um, tire your your eyes or I'm more I'm adding more that people is now having digital canvases too. Uh, if you want to have in your home, uh, for me, it will be really annoying having s s one light all day, yellow and black, and you know, but something black and white is not light. And this is the reason I use black also, because it's more colorful to, to be show. And I think it's more uh, meditative, I think. I always say that uh, x-rays, uh, music and, and books are in black and white, but you can say red in black and white and people will see red. I, it's, it's just something more about my philosophical thing and trying to translate into art, but I, I use color. And, and in my own work, I'm not using a lot of color these days because I already use with street arts. So I am drinking the color from them. I, I satisfy, let's say, my, my thirst of color with them. And then in my own work, I, and, and I think this is also because I live mostly by night. I, in Galicia, it's always cloudy and rain. And I was born in a in a place that was a very industrial nature because I have a lot of forests, but at the same time we have the biggest uh, coal mine in Europe with a 300 meters uh, chimney. So I think that this this also influences in how we how we create. I think if I live more by day, I think I, it will be more green. I mean, I'm a big, <laughs> I'm a big fan of black and white. That's like you know been very much. Um, I, I I definitely have some form of. I don't know why I have definitely an attraction towards like black and white uh, type of like artworks or in general like uh, work and color. I feel like a lot mm. of the time what you're saying that color can distract is true. Um, and I do definitely like feel like it's it makes you focus on the details more when yeah, it's like just but not, not not distract in a bad sense, but more to to add but to add uh, meaning sometimes. Like uh, the the perfect example is the the list of children. You know the film of the Nazis and mm -hmm. yeah, of course. Uh, in this film, there is a girl uh, that has a, a red dress. All the film is in black and white. But at a certain point, just for a few seconds, they use red. Yeah. And this is OK. This is well used because it's, for, it's not to distract. It's to add meaning. So if you want to add meaning, add color. But when I think that when you don't have something to tell, you have to, you have to put a lot of ornaments. It's like the, the Baroque. In the Baroque, uh, it's like this. A lot of ornaments, a lot of love, because it was empty. It was the, just more the, the visual impact more than the idea. And I think I, I try the opposite because Nowadays, with all the computers we have and plugins and effects, it's, it's really easy to do something impact for the eye. It's really easy. It's, uh, we have presets. The heart for me is saying something with very little is the heart for me. And when it happens to me with another artist, I fall in love instantly. I, I always say the, the example of Lu Lucas Aguirre. I met him past year when I saw only one work of him. I say, this guy is understanding everything because he is understanding his format. He's working a lot with uh, virtual reality, but he's making a reach with his with his old work that was painting in the streets and, and, and painting uh, paintings, and and he's doing the same, but now in virtual reality, and and he's and he, uh, he how can I say he don't put a lot of things to distract. The, everything he put is to add meaning. And on the other hand, I see a lot of people doing crazy things that this oh this is incredible, but nothing to read. And I respect it, I consume it, but I forget it. Uh, the next week, I think, oh, I can't, but another kind of, of work, like, uh, I don't know, uh, David Leeser, for example, or Negative Vibrations, I, uh, the Kidmograph is a classic, or PS Lysis, this kind of people is, I see a gift of them, and I recognize them at first sight, and I don't forget them. And when two years uh, passed, I think, oh, this, is, uh, this must be a good artwork, because it's still here in my mind. And maybe my conscious don't like uh, uh, totally, you understand? But this is what yeah. I have to okay, Maybe this is not that for me, but for my brain is. So I, I must accept that this is art, maybe, because my brain is, is, is enjoying it. Absolutely. Uh, all of the artists you mentioned are amazing. Actually, Kid McGrath, uh, Gustavo, he was one of the first artists I ever interviewed uh, here, like back last year, I think it was November. Uh, so yeah, yeah, incredible, incredible I, work. 
I remember, and, and I always uh, use him as an example of, of, of real, real OG because I, I, when I entered Tumblr, he already was there. And I, I told him that for me it was an inspiration, not only about the, the, the artistic side, because we work in different concepts, but how he, how he was focusing if art. I think, oh, this guy is focusing uh, perfectly what I want to do. And I use him as a reference. And, and the same with PS Lysis, because when I started, I think he was 17, maybe. He was really young. And he had, even today, is active, uh, uh, a Tumblr that he was uh, promoting, a lot, um, helping a lot of GIF artists. He, he was doing, like, this month, we will do something about the snow. So you send your GIF about the snow. And he is the GIF artist collective. It's called the Tumblr. And this kind of people, for me, was inspiration uh, in the artistic side, of course, but then in, in the human side, that's how you focus what you are doing, not only doing it, because there are a lot of artists that do crazy things, but then you have to understand how to move it and how to how to show and how to explain what you do. If not, we'll be forgotten, I think. And I focus in these guys, for example, and, and they are st uh, still active and they are nowadays alive. And, and it's really, really nice to see that they were right. 10 years ago. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And I'm I'm looking forward to seeing your uh, DM on like artists that I should uh, chat to and interview because uh, I'm yeah. like I'm super open to any interviews and chats like this. Absolutely, I think the space needs definitely more of this. Sure, I, I will write you a couple of, of names as but I, you will. You, I think you already know them. But uh, I think because I, I talk with them a lot of, with by email years ago, and I think uh, and, and I must say that you do a really good question, so I think they will enjoy as as much as me for sure. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Well, Adrian, it was really nice to speak. Um, oh so pleasure. thank you so much for your time. It was it was an amazing chat, and have a good rest of your day. No, my, my pleasure and, and insist. Uh, huge thanks for, for this kind of spaces. I think they are really needed. And hope to see more, more guys soon here. Thanks a lot yeah, for, for, sure. for Nicole. Thanks a lot. Thank Enjoy. you. Bye-bye. Good day.